is WSMV4 News at 10. The long road to recovery continues after the deadly explosion at a munitions plant in Hickman County. Thank you for joining us tonight at 10 o'clock. I'm Tracy Cornett. I'm Lydia Fielder. We now know the names of the 16 victims. It has been three days now since that explosion at the Accurate Energetic Systems facility, and the investigation remains very active tonight. During today's press conference, officials said the investigation is still moving at quote, a snail's pace. Crews are still in the process of collecting samples and trying to make confirmations, but first, they have to make sure the scene is safe for everyone to work. We make sure that that scene is safe, uh, render anything that needs to be neutralized as far as an, uh, potential hazards, whether that's uh, an explosives or anything else, we'll make that secure, and then we start to do um, the recovery process of any remains that are there. We're told it could take weeks, if not months, before we get any answers. That's because they want to make sure that there are no mistakes made. One of the biggest announcements since the explosion came this afternoon. As Humphreys County Sheriff Chris Davis released the names of those 16 victims believed to be inside that plant at the time of the blast. But as our Steve Mailing shows us now, the process of reuniting the victims with their family could take some time. This community is no stranger to this technology. It's the same way that the TBI identified victims of the Waverly floods. And while the names of the 16 victims were released earlier today, the process of identification is far from finished. Jason Adams, Eric Anderson, Billy Baker, Adam Boatman. One by one. Christopher Clark, Mindy Clifton. Sheriff Chris Davis confirmed the names of the 16 people lost in Friday's explosion at Accurate Energetic Systems. James Cook, Rena Gillingham, Letitia Mays, Jeremy Moore. Each person with their own story and their own connection to this tight-knit community. We may not have known that individual personally, but in some form or fashion, we probably, or do, know their family or extended family. Melinda Rainey. Melissa Stanford. The investigation and evidence recovery continues, but a priority for crews on site now confirming identities of those lost in the tragedy. As remains are brought to us, uh, we will be testing those uh, to do matches. The technology uses DNA taken from family members. The first step of the process that was done immediately. Trenton Stewart, Rachel Woodall. Then when remains are found and brought to the lab on site, the TBI can bring answers to families who have been holding their breath since the explosion. Stephen Wright, Donald Yule. The technology links DNA to remains within two hours. And while that could mean a quicker identification process, the scene as it stands allows for law enforcement to move at what they say is a snail's pace. If this is an accident, we want to prove it to ourselves that this is an accident. If this is something, not saying that it is or that it is not, we only have that one shot to process that evidence and to be methodical and slow in making sure that it is that accident or it is something else. And this is once again one of many different facets of this investigation and site cleanup. But as each victim is positively identified by the TBI, it can complete another step in the healing process for this entire community. Reporting here in Bucksnort, Steve Mailing, WSMB4.